And so by way of introduction, um, as first um, of many and very notable deals that uh, many of you have seen, um, as a precursor to that, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Martin Fink, who is um, uh, the CTO of um, HP and the current um, head of uh, HP Cloud. Martin? Thanks, Alex. Welcome, everybody. It's a fantastic turnout for a first edition, don't you think? It's actually pretty good. Um, we decided to actually merge um, our keynotes because we figured that if I got on here and started talking about everything we're doing, you'd spend all of your time saying, when's he going to shut up and start talking about eucalyptus? Um, and so we decided to kind of get ahead of you and, and do that. So I'm just going to spend a couple of minutes. I'm going to give you the condensed and shortened version of a year of helium. And uh, then I'm going to ask uh, uh, Martin Mikos to come and join me here and uh, take over the presentation. So about a year ago, a little less than a year ago, we embarked on what I describe internally as in HP as a student body left. And uh, what we did is we redirected every resource that we could find related to cloud. Um, and we had a number of activities going on and uh, that which gave us quite a presence in the marketplace and said we are going really all in in OpenStack. Now, uh, a couple of years before with our public cloud, we had started the journey to OpenStack before um, OpenStack was probably ready. And in fact, uh, the team had done an enormous amount of work in order to be able to get OpenStack to where it needed to be to run our public cloud. And so now what we needed to do was actually um, get all of our resources across our private, public, and managed cloud offerings focused on delivering a technology platform that was common across all of those delivery models and be able to deliver an enterprise-grade experience for a hybrid cloud. And so that's what we did. We did this, what I call the student body left, and we focused all of our resources on doing that. So for those of you who track the tool that Ashley Marantis puts together, um, called Stackalytics, you'll notice that probably starting around November, December last, uh, last year, um, you'll notice that there's this massive swing of HP resources, contributions, commits, et cetera, to OpenStack, where um, today for the current Juno release that's in development, um, taken in aggregate, HP is actually now the number one contributor um, to OpenStack. So when we say we went all in, we went truly all in. The other thing, and for those of you who aren't aware, I spent from 1999 about 2005 running HP's Linux and open source business. And um, at the time that we did OpenStack for our public cloud and did a lot of enhancements to run our public cloud, we got, I'll say, very focused internally in how we were going to do that. And so the other thing that I'll say I had to do from leveraging uh, the experiences of open source is say we had to do OpenStack, but we had to do it right. And that means we had to do it in the true spirit of open source. And so in redirecting all of our resources to uh, OpenStack, it was also getting really close and tied to Trunk and really delivering in the true spirit of how open source is done and being done as part of a community process. I'll tell you a little story. When I was running the Linux and open source business for HP uh, back in those early days, probably the funnest part of that job was that I got to meet and be with a number of competitors in a completely different environment. And one of the things that we learned through the open source process was how we could actually be in a room together, collaborate, and do things that were for the benefit of the overall open source community, the overall open source program. But we were not confused that when we were in front of a customer, we were fierce enemies and we were harsh competitors. My favorite example, I hope they don't mind, I'll actually talk about a couple of guys at IBM, so Dan Fry and Ross Morey come to mind, who actually became, I'll say, close friends as we were going through the Linux development and the open source process. And uh, we would collaborate, work together, we were on phone calls all the time, et cetera. And it was a fantastic thing, and we got to know each other pretty well through those days. Uh, but at the same time, and we would joke about this, right? We were not confused about when it was time to compete. 
And so I want to echo Alex's comments that it is disappointing that some sometimes forget what the true spirit of open source is. And hopefully we'll go back to those early days and remember that open source is a community process and it's about being not confused about when you're behaving as a community and behaving for the benefit of the whole versus um, competing uh, out in the marketplace, out in the industry. And HP and Mirantis, for example, in some scenarios we compete. But in this scenario, we collaborate and we're the best of friends and we're not confused about doing that. So that's what we've done. Uh, last May, we launched our first uh, OpenStack Community Edition, all open source, all free, all open source. And we are hard at work. And uh, within a couple of weeks here, we'll be releasing our commercial edition, uh, our developer platform. And we've also announced our Helion network in order to bring a network of cloud and, and telecom service providers from around the world to be able to deliver the Helion platform uh, to anybody around the world. And so that's the other thing that's different about what we're doing is we're not just delivering a distribution or a piece of software. We're actually delivering an end-to-end -end experience. So we're delivering the actual distro, we're delivering the hardware that is tuned to that distro, and we're also delivering across any delivery model you want. So you want it on-premises, we'll do that. You want it on our premises, on our public cloud, we'll do that. You want it on our, on, uh, on our premises managed by us, but in a private environment, we'll do that with the managed private cloud. You want to establish a virtual private cloud between your premises and ours, we'll do that as well. And it's that common technology platform all based around OpenStack that allows us to do that. And so that's what we've been doing over the past year, and it gives you a pretty good sense of the direction. So in the spirit of openness, one of the other things that we as a company have decided is that we will only acquire companies where the CEO's name is Martin. <laughs> oh, come on, I had to do that, you know. Um, he spells his wrong. Um, I, I spell mine correctly. Um, but uh, th we did want to bring in more and more of that open source capability, that open source talent, that open source know-how um, into the company and grow our capabilities there. And having someone also who could lead this thing that can continue that pure open source mantra and understand how open source really works was very important to us. And then on top of that, being able to bring the AWS design patterns, which a lot of people are familiar with, and, um, and use that within our OpenStack framework um, was also something that was of particular value to us. So with that, I'll actually ask Martin Mikos to come up on stage and give you the details of how Eucalyptus works and how we're going to do that. So Martin Mikos. Thank you. Thanks. Good morning, everybody. And congratulations, OpenStack ecosystem community for fantastic uh, build out of your project over the four, past four years. I've been watching it very closely, as you know. And I'm honored and happy to be here today and be, be part of that. For the last one and a half decades, I have been trying to reach full victory for open source. And to me, it means making sure that users get amazing benefit from open source and making sure that those who create the open source code get full credit for what they do. That to me is full victory for open source. And I think we are showing it every day. We've been showing it for over 15 years already. I had the fortune to be part of the whole thing that became the LAMP stack. And I'm very happy to be here today and talk about OpenStack. Just to be clear, uh, we signed a deal last week with HP, but it hasn't closed yet. So I, officially I'm here as the CEO of Eucalyptus. I'm not allowed to make statements on behalf of any other company, although perhaps soon I will. <clears throat> this is Eucalyptus. It's a cloud that fits into a backpack with batteries included. It has AWS compatibility that, like no other, and we've focused over the past two years on ease of installation, use, and operation. Those of you who you learned to know the early Eucalyptus know that it wasn't an initial priority of the project but it came, became a very dear priority of the project. And it's how we really stand out in the whole world of 
cloud platforms with the Eucalyptus platform. I don't think there's anybody else with that narrow and sharp focus on, on what can be done. The clouds can be a little bit bigger, but you can really put them on your, your back and there's batteries included and you operate them from your smartphone or from a tablet. On Sunday, I became a member of the OpenStack Foundation. I'm very happy to be here as an individual member and as a, soon as a corporate member as well. <laughs> And I'm serious about my intention to contribute, not just what I did through contributing competition, but contributing to the success of OpenStack. And I'll continue to be critical where critic, uh, a critical mindset is needed, and I'll continue to be positive where, where a positive mindset is needed. But I believe that only by being honest and, and uh, uh, truthful about the state of things can you really improve them. And every state of anything needs improvement always, especially open source. Open source is something that over time beats anything else, but it's the question over time and how fast we get to that goal. So how will open source win in cloud? There are amazing benefits with open source, and those who have closed source pro cloud products suffer because they typically don't build their products in a modular fashion the way we have to do in open source. We have to make modular products because we have so many disparate uh, groups and people working on them. We have competitors who collaborate on the products. Doesn't happen in the closed source world. You have this notion that anyone can scrutinize. It's open and therefore uh, over time quality will just magically improve because there's always somebody who has a complaint. And I learned that at MySQL that everybody, every time when somebody was complaining, they were actually saying, I would, I would love to love it, but right now I cannot. Meaning it's a sign of passion when people are very critical of something. And there's a wonderful uh, mechanism of Darwinism happening in open source that uh, stuff, uh, good stuff survives. We try a lot of things and the good things survive and they become better and better and better. And we've seen it consistently now. We've seen it over 20 years in open source. And there's less lock-in in, in open source as well. Of course, no model comes without its own challenges. In a large consortium or community, it's a question, who can say no? We all know that Linus Thorold still is the guy who says no about the Linux kernel. Not perhaps about things outside, but the Linux kernel. And when you achieve and try to achieve the best possible design, every, there needs to be somebody who can say no. A technical committee or chief architect or something. Some way of getting that no into the decision making process as well. Of course, when, when co uh, competitors collaborate, it also means that they can have conflicts inside uh, a project. And then it's very important to listen to customers because many times in open source projects we get lots of people building it and, and it takes some time before we get the input from customers and users. So when I look at OpenStack and Eucalyptus or just Yuka, I, I see two main things here. I would like to see it as nimble meeting massive. The OpenStack project and ecosystem foundation is massive. There are lots of projects, lots of features, lots of ambitions, and there's a broad uh, uh, set of goals to be achieved. Whereas Eucalyptus has a tiny, tiny engineering team. It's nothing compared to what the, the size of the teams working on OpenStack. It's building a very tight product, not a project. It's focusing on ease of use, ease of installation. It's a single line command to install Eucalyptus for, uh, with the fast start uh, functionality. So it's a really tiny group coming in and we hope that we are bringing some very useful and hard earned ex uh, experiences into this group. The Eucalyptus founders started seven years ago building what they, what they built and many of the concepts that they came up with back then are in use in many of the cloud products of today. And then it's a question of the hybrid thinking and this, of course, has been a lovely debate over the last few years. What's the meaning of the AWS API? Is it closed or is it open? Should we follow it or should we fight it? We, we believe there's extreme, uh, extremely high value in bringing that into the broader world of open source. And the way I think about it is that in the public cloud, the AWS API is private. But in the private cloud, the AWS API is public because it's available as free and open source software. 
Here's what Cloud Opinion, formerly Cloud Borat, I think, on Twitter wrote about the deal last week. He listed, or she, I don't know who it is actually, the person listed three uh, characteristics here. Yuka focused on and did well. Interoperability with Amazon Web Services, simple to get started, and product focus. This is some of the value that we are bringing into HP and more broadly into the OpenStack ecosystem. So then I can't speak for HP and soon I can't speak for Eucalyptus because it will be acquired. I can speak for myself. So this is my declaration to you what I will stand for. I will stand for hardening of the central functionality of any software we deal with. I think it's critical in cloud that you get the core pieces absolutely right. And I know how painful it is to get there because I've gone through that process in small scale uh, with Eucalyptus over the past four years. I will stand for the voice of the customers and users. I'm not a customer or user, but I will always listen to them and give them a more priority than many other things. I believe that the best way to, to build useful software is to listen to the customers and users. Customers are not always right. So I'm not saying you should do what they are asking for. Sometimes you must remind customers that I'm here to serve you, not to please you. But you must listen to customers. And I believe in very tight design and serious systems engineering, meaning uh, paying a lot of attention to the design and architecture of pieces of software <clears throat> and having those battles of, of people arguing for and against and really arriving at something that really works. This is hard, hard work. And it takes patience and tenacity and skill and experience to do so. And that's why I'm so happy that there are in the OpenStack ecosystem, lots of people have been building infrastructure software for 20 years or 30 years. That's actually key to the success. Not unlike, just as an analogy, when Microsoft, if you forgive me a closed source analogy here, when Microsoft decided to make Windows a really robust platform, what did they do? They hired former operating system engineers from, that had worked for Digital Equipment Corporation, if you remember such a company. That's how they boosted their team with serious systems engineering. And that exists here in the OpenStack community at Cisco and uh, IBM, Red Hat, HP, and so on. Conceptually, and this is a question I'll come back to after uh, when we get settled in at HP, I believe that OpenStack can and will have components, add-ons, adjuncts, call them what you like, that, are, that work with the OpenStack product and add to it or act as an alternative to something. And examples today would be Ceph, Reax, CS, Midonet and others, where they are building really good software that does something that already happens in OpenStack but is useful in some uh, deployment scenarios. Well, that's my vision for Eucalyptus. So conceptually, and I'm conceptual now, I'm not I'm not talking about the technical solution. Conceptually, you can say, I want OpenStack and I want to run some part of the workload so that I can move workloads back and forth with Amazon or perhaps some other public cloud. And as for the concrete actions here, we'll sell, we sell and support OpenStack. We sell and support Eucalyptus. We just closed a big deal today for Eucalyptus of a giant private cloud. And we, you will be able to use them together. So here's the wonderful job I'm now getting ready to take over that Martin Fink has very skillfully built up and, and assembled so that we now can go even faster and stronger in this. HP launched the Helion brand in May of this year. And you could say, what's the meaning of a brand? The meaning of a brand when a company makes it, it's a commitment. It says, this is so important for us that we give it a separate name. It is so important that we will put a lot of resources in it. It's so important that we want customers to, to recognize it and be able to ask about it, use it, buy it. And that's why it means a long, long-term commitment when you, when you launch a new brand. By many measurements, HP is now the number one contributor for the Juno release of OpenStack. And as Martin Fink ex uh, explained to you, HP is integrating that into many different products and product lines across HP. So it's becoming a platform for all things cloud within Hewlett-Packard. And personally, I must say, I am 
arriving at a team that just is the best enterprise cloud team I've seen. It's amazing what kind of people HP, the cloud unit, has hired in the past years and who have come from other parts of HP or have been in that unit for a long time. It's a fantastic team. And I've, I'm seeing nothing like that in the industry, in the enterprise cloud space. And again, like Martin Fink said, the goal here or, or the activity is delivering cloud in multiple deployment models and with a complete solution in mind. This is something we learned at Eucalyptus where we were a pure software company and we we're selling software for our, to our customers. Many customers said, why don't you give us the complete cloud? Do you do managed services? Do you do hosting? Can you come on, on site? Can you provide the hardware? What hardware do you recommend? What hardware is fastest with Eucalyptus? And I think we're seeing a shift in the industry at large where uh, the, it's, the world is going to a, a mode now where you have infrastructure vendors who provide you with complete solutions like clouds and then you have services that run on the clouds and you have fewer and fewer pure software companies in the world. That's why I'm very happy to join HP as soon as the deal close, closes and then I will be speaking as, a, as the head of the HP cloud business. So like I said, it's full victory for open, uh, open source. We did it already once. We did it with the LAMP stack in the web era. And the LAMP stack was driven by many companies. There was Red Hat, there was MySQL, there was the whole Apache cor uh, consortium backed by IBM and, and HP and others and there was PHP, Perl, Python, and you can even include other languages and other databases and other components there. It was a massive success, and what we did in the web era with the LAMP stack, we are now doing in the cloud era with OpenStack. Thank you very much, I'll stop here. Uh, there's my email address, it will change uh, in a few weeks to a, an hp.com email address. I look forward to hearing from you. I'm very happy to be part of the OpenStack ecosystem, being a member of the OpenStack Foundation. Thank you for accepting, accepting me and thanks for listening to me today. <laughs> to me.